Hi, welcome to Fosco Gospel Church, the Assembly of Your Limited People. You are about to listen to a live transforming message, and I hope you are blessed by it. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay connected and uh, click on the notification to stay updated on our messages. Here comes the message for today, and I hope you are blessed by it. This glorious day, I set our praises in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we commit to your son that you are about to min- use to minister unto us. I ask that Father, much more than he has prepared, Lord, you minister through him in Jesus' name. And for us, Lord, as we approach your throne of grace and mercy, I ask that Father, you minister your word to us in Jesus' name. This word in the mighty name of Jesus will refresh our spirits in Jesus' name. This word in the mighty name of Jesus will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Fruit of many, many uh, things in the mighty name of Jesus. Fruit of salvation, fruit of deliverance, fruit of healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. I come against every spirit that makes people to be distracted when the word of God is going on. I bind and bind you and cast you out of this assembly in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. All we are saying, Lord, is that at the end of this ministration, none of us will go the same way we have come in the mighty name of Jesus. This we ask with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let me get this clarification. Dr. Resson, what are you saying? Come. I didn't get that right, so I felt that should be well taken. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I want to thank God for another day. This year is running to an end. I want to thank God for his grace that you and I have enjoyed. I uh, forgot to have kept us till now. It's a time to thank him and rejoice and give him praise. Praise the Lord. And we have some of our icon friends that are here uh, on their annual Thanksgiving service at the appropriate time. We'll be recognizing them. Incidentally, you know, I was with someone and he says, uh, I'm FCA. And I said, What happened? He said, Friend of Chartered Accountant. So I'm FCA this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you tell your Bibles with me to? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're going to read verses 18, 19, and 20. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18, 19, and 20. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Give me King James Version. And go back to verse 18. No, let's start from 16. Thank you. Okay. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's stop there. I want us to sing from the King James Version. Rejoice evermore. For this is the will of God. Pray without ceasing. For this is the will of God 
in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you sing rejoice evermore for this is the will of god pray without ceasing for this is the will of god in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you clap your hands rejoice evermore for this is the will of god pray without ceasing for this is the will of god in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning two more times let us sing rejoice evermore for this is the will of god pray without ceasing for this is the will of god in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in Christ jesus concern one more time let's sing oh joy for this is the will of god pray without ceasing for this is the will of god in everything we pray for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you can you say amen to that so the will of god for us is to rejoice evermore is to pray without ceasing and in everything to do what Hey, in everything to do what? In everything to give thanks. So this morning, by the grace of God, very quickly, I'll be talking on what I've called cultivating the gratitude attitude. Cultivating the gratitude attitude. From the song we have rendered and from scripture, you will see that God's intent and purpose for all is to rejoice evermore. Even when there are challenges, pray about it. And when those challenges come in the midst of it, what do you do? You give thanks. And let me start by saying that scripture says, in everything. It didn't say for everything. But in everything, while you are in it, give thanks. Can I hear an amen in the house? Hey, please give me a resounding amen. So whatever we are going through, however tough and hard it should be, what does the scripture in John also do? To give, to do what? To do what? To give thanks. So from the scripture that we have read, let me tell you three things very quickly. Number one, thanksgiving is commanded. Rejoice evermore. It's a command. So the first thing I want to leave you for us to cultivate the attitude of gratitude is that we must see that God wants us to rejoice evermore. That does not mean challenges will not come. But it says rejoice evermore. So whatever you are passing through, however tough and hard it may be, the instruction is that we must rejoice evermore. It's a command that we must live up to. And those in the military and paramilitary, they understand what the command is. Attention! By the Attention! <laughs> Hallelujah. They understand it. They don't negotiate it. Why? A commander has given a command. So the scripture is telling us, rejoice evermore. I remember in the NYC days, the commander told us, in the military, when they tell you, follow, march! Le, ra, le, ra, le. 
Say you keep moving. And some of us ask him, if we see C in front, and you tell me left right, the man say, you keep left right, you enter the sea. We say, like, like that one. <laughs> Until the commander tells you, right about turn. That's when you obey that command. If there is no about turn and you are entering into the sea, as long as you say, left, right, left, right, left, right, what do you do? You move on. Why? It's a command. It's a command. So the scripture is telling us it's a command. Rejoice evermore. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance. And I love the, you know, from the area I come from, I love it so much. You know, they will tell you, when a situation has gone beyond crying, what do you do? You smile. It's another way of saying, look, there are situations that come. You know you can't do anything about it. Then take it to God. So in this scripture, the first thing I want to leave with us is the fact that to rejoice is a command. So for you to cultivate the attitude of gratitude, you must see that rejoicing must be part and parcel of you. Whatever you are going through. And you know as the choir was saying, no money in my pocket, joy. Don't be so quiet. Huh? So even when there is no money in your pocket, what is it? Joy. Because you know, tomorrow will be better than today. So it's a command. And when I say it's a command, it's good for us to understand that the Bible that is telling us that did not leave us without examples. In John chapter 6, the Bible tells us, when Jesus saw a large multitude, from verse 5, so large, the Bible says he had compassion upon them. And he asked one of the disciples, come, these people that have been following us, if we want to give them food, how much of food? And Philip looked and said, even if the wages are so, 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 it's not enough. And Jesus said, let them sit. And as they sat down, the Bible says, one of the disciples saw that there was a lad there that had five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus said, bring it. And look at what Jesus did. In verse 10 and 11 thereabout, the Bible says, let me start from verse 9. There is a lad there who had five barleys of uh, loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Verse 10. And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. Verse 11. And Jesus took the load. And when he has done what? 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 He gave thanks. Five loaves of bread, two fishes cannot feed 5,000. But even with the little he had, what did he do? He gave thanks. So he gave us an example for us not to worry. Oh, it's not enough. Hey, how will I do it? The little that is there, give thanks. In John chapter 11, the Bible tells us when Jesus got to the uh, graveyard of uh, uh, Lazarus, and everywhere was, oh, morning, 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 everywhere. The Bible says, Jesus got to that tomb. I think from verse 41, he now told them. Look at what it says. John 11 from verse 41. Then they took away the stones from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eye and said, Father, I do what? I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I thank thee. An attitude of thanksgiving. In expectation of what God will do. So when I say that it's a command, Jesus gave us enough example 
for us to follow. What did Apostle Paul has to tell us on this issue of giving thanks? In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, Paul, writing to the Philippian Christian, has this to tell us. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with what? With what? With what? With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So even in our making our requests, we must never forget to add thanksgiving. So it's not just a command that Jesus gave us an example about. It's a command that we have Christians in time past have carried it out. And we can learn from that example. In Colossians chapter 4, Paul writing to the Colossian Christians also told them exactly the same thing. But let's look at what the writer of Hebrew has to tell us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. He said, by him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. How long? How long? How long? That is the fruit of our leaves giving thanks to his name. So whatever we are going through, however tough and hard, there should be in our lips the sacrifice. And you know sacrifice is always painful. Sacrifice is not something you come sweet about. So when it's even painful to give thanks, we must through our mouth give the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Why? It's a command that we need to live up to, irrespective of whatever is happening around us. Can I hear an amen in the house? It's not just a command that we should practice. Remember, I'm talking about cultivating the gratitude attitude. And I've said that thanksgiving is a command. Thanksgiving also means you must celebrate. Thanksgiving means you must celebrate. Cele you are celebrating something. You are giving thanks for something. And for me, I'll put it in two scenarios. Thank God for his greatness. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his greatness. Because it is through his greatness you have enjoyed his goodness. In Psalm 150 verses 2 and 3, the psalmist tells us this, trying to describe the greatness of God. Look at the way he puts it. In Psalm 150 verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, Praise him. For his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. You celebrate God for his mighty acts. You think through and appreciate God for his good acts. This year is running to an end. Can you look back and thank God for what God has done? Or can you look back past years and see what God has done and thank him for his great acts? Hallelujah. Great, mighty acts. For the Israelites, the way they crossed the Red Sea is a mighty act. That the enemies that have suppressed them for years could just get uh, drowned. In the sea with no AK 47 use is a mighty act of God. And it takes a person who can think through to be able to see how God has fought battles for you. As I was looking at God's mighty acts, one of the things I remember in my life was as a teenager, just left secondary school, was in school of surveying or your 1976. Yes. 
I will have lost my life. What happened that day? We went, I went to this water tank, a cemented water tank on the floor, but cemented. And you know, it's always filled with water. So all you just do is you can just bend down and use your pail or bucket to get water. As I bent down, I didn't know what happened. Inside that underground tank, full of water. Thank God I'm a child. I, I'm, I was a child of God. I'm still a child of God. And something tells me, oh, you won't die now. I'm too young to die. Lord, I've not fulfilled my, test, my, my assignment. I can't die. And as I was ruminating about that, I now remembered that as a young boy, I followed some of my friends to Roe Park, Lagos, to go and learn how to swim. So I now remember that you now, there's a way you need to swing to be able to come up. I remember that doing that thing, they tell us that if you fall into that situation, if you come up the first time, you go down. Second time, if you go the third time, no rescue, you are a corner. All that was going in my heart. So I had to put into practice. This is between life and death. So I started. And as I was coming up, something tells me, why not raise up your hand? Why not raise up your hand? That's why it's good to obey the Holy Spirit too. May you not disobey the Spirit in your day of uh, salvation in the name of Jesus. So as I had in my heart, raise up your hand. I raised up my hand. I didn't know that one of my namesake who was in the hostel saw what happened. So he ran and he called some people. By the time they got to that underground water tank was the time I raised up my hand. So with him and the other people, they grabbed that hand. You are going home. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was my saving grace. Is a mighty act of God. I will have lost my life 1976. A grad, you know, you need to look back. Mighty acts of God. And I know, having shared my own testimony, you have your own testimony. Can you just say thank you, Jesus? Hey, can you just say thank you, Jesus? So the greatness of God should make you thank you for his goodness. What I have enjoyed was just his goodness. I wasn't better than any other person. So we must celebrate it. God's greatness, God's goodness, irrespective. So when things are going bad and hard, that's when you need to go back and look at God's mighty word and say, even if it is bad today, thank you for yesterday. Oh, thank you for this time. Oh, thank you. And that brings you joy. That makes you to celebrate. Hallelujah. So Thanksgiving is not just a command. Thanksgiving means we must be ready to celebrate God for his greatness and for his good. Look at how Paul Talking to his son, Timothy describes God's greatness. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. He says, now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the glory, the honor, now and forevermore. That's how great he is. He is eternal. He is invisible. Oh, but I it's invisible, but his acts are so visible. He's the only wise God. When he gave a portion of his wisdom to Solomon, he stood out among his peers. He says, he's the God to be honored, to be given glory forever and ever. Can I hear an amen in the house? And in Revelation, John has this to tell all. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, to receive honor, to receive power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. 
He created all things. He created you. He created me for his pleasure. So when we think of that goodness and we celebrate the greatness of God and the goodness of God, then we are cultivating this habit of gratitude unto the Lord. Can I hear an amen in the house? So thanksgiving is commanded. Thanksgiving will celebrate. Thanksgiving will also build these characters. What are the characters that God thanksgiving should bring forth? Number one, contentment. Contentment. Wherever you see a heart of thanksgiving, there will be contentment. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. Paul writing to the Philippian Christians. See what he says. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned whatever state I am, therewith to be content. For I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everyone and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then in verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can I hear an amen in the house? So a heart that is full of thanksgiving will be contented. Because you know, even if it is bad today, I have a God who will make it better tomorrow. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a character that a heart that is full of thanksgiving will exhibit contentment that I know this God. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, he gives us another character. Confidence. For I know he who has begun a good work in me will not leave me abandoned. He will finish whatsoever he has started. That's what Paul was telling the Philippians. Philippians 1 verse 6. I am confident he who has begun a good work in me, surely he will accomplish it. That's a character that a heart that is full of thanksgiving will exhibit. Is a heart that knows that we God on our side. We are able to win every battle of life. What does that mean? It means we should not be persistent. We should not be a, pe a pessimist. We should be an optimist pe person. It means that we must grow in our spiritual to spiritual maturity. We need to understand that God, by our frame, wants us to be people who will always give him thanks at all times. And perhaps you are here. You think coming to church is just one of those ceremonies. No, 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 no. Media. Please, can you give me that clip? This is a clip from Harvard University. And let's see the benefits of going to church, which we need to learn of. Thank you. Quality rates go down 20 to 30 percent. You need a healthier life. To regularly attend church services, you're more optimistic, you have lower rates of depression, lower rates of suicide, you have greater purpose in life, you are less likely to divorce. You are more self-controlled. 2018, they put the study out. If you take your kids to church in their 20s, they have a 60% higher chance of well-being and happiness. And then a more recent Harvard study talked about how if you go to church, you have a much higher percentage chance, it's like 70% chance of women getting off drugs, exponentially higher chance of decreasing depression, anxiety, decreasing life expectancy. Harvard stressed that you can't get those benefits from going to like a country club or 
or some type of community center or something. So I think supernaturally it's crazy how church works like that. The church really does help us. So the church helps us. Maybe you're under the sound of my voice and you believe that the church is just an association. Thank God this is not from an African university. This is from Harvard. It says attending church makes you to be optimistic. Attempting church makes sure that you don't fall into the risk of depression. Attending church means that the issue of divorce is not likely to happen to you. Attending church makes you to be able to be a success. He says you cannot get those things attending country club. Did you hear him say that? So maybe you're under the sound of my voice and you belong to that group. What is church? And there are even those who come from where I come from. Shadrach and Shamin Shoshio, you are missing it. It's a place where when you come with all your heart, it makes a whole lot of a difference in what happens to you. Can we be on our feet this morning? Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. Pray without ceasing, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus, concerning you. Let's sing it two more times. Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. Pray for this is the will of God in everything we thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you one more time let's sing it rejoice everyone for this is the will of God pray we are singing for this is the will of God bowed and every eye closed as we stand I want to make some specific calls this morning very very specific and listen the first one is just from that clip that we have seen you are under the sound of my voice you do not go to church regularly you think it's a waste of time God wants me to warn you. Repent from today. That's the first class of people I want to pray with. You go to church occasionally because you think there's no benefit in it. The second group of people, every eye closed and every head bowed. Your marriage is going through a tough time and you are even contemplating divorce. Thank God you are in church today. Thank God you are hearing God's word. Thank God for that clip that is also saying there is a way out. If only your coming to church will be of benefit to you. Number three, your child is outside this country and the report you are hearing is not making you happy. I have a word from the Lord to pray with you this morning. Number four, five. Some reoccurring situations in your family lineage is making you sad. And another year is approaching. And you are thinking, is this how it's going to be? God says, I show my person you can have a better year ahead. Number six, you are about to join an association. They are not telling you the nitty gritty about it, but when you join it, yes, you have the influence, you have the power, you have the connection. 
but they've not told you the difference of what is really happening within and i'm here to warn you not to go further number seven you're about to do a business you know it is bad but you are saying others have done it and they have gone scot free god wants me to warn you you have been warned you have cheated some people in past that's number eight before now and some people want to cheat you in a business transaction now and you want to do some funny things be careful that you are not consumed by what you want to do number nine you lost something valuable in your dream and you are worried about it and the fear that it may manifest physically is haunting you god says pray with my people and lastly the, that one is general we are going to pray that none of us will lose our children mysteriously if you fall into any of these categories that i've called and that's why i've called everything can you please come to this altar we need to pray i'll reiterate it so please come any of the items that i've talked about you don't go to church regularly your marriage is going through tough times and you're even thinking of divorce you have a child outside this country and the reports you are hearing is making you unhappy uh, there is a reoccurring situation in your family lineage and it's bad and another year is coming and you are saying can i have a better year next time you are about to join an association and they are not telling you all that is in need it's darker than what you are seeing you are about to do a business you know it is bad but you are saying others have done it and they have gone call free why not me you have cheated in a business transaction before you are in a business transaction now people want to shoot you and you want to do something funny in your dream you have lost something valuable and you are worried about it and it's haunting you is this not going to happen in the physical and like i said the last one is for every one of us to pray that none of us will lose any of our children mysteriously so if you fall into that category please come every head bowed and every eye closed and those of you who are here can you just talk to god go on your knees and just talk to god whichever of you that falls in the lineage of what i've reeled out talk to god this is the altar of mercy and i know god is here for god to have revealed this is for a purpose it's because there must be an end it's because god wants you to rejoice it's because God wants to cut short every form of mourning and sadness. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. One of the things we learned today, Jesus said, Lord, whenever I call upon you, you answer. By the mercy of God, he will answer you. Those of you who are standing there, can you just stretch your hands towards them and pray for them? Let the mercy of God flow. Let mercy overcome every form of judgment every voice of condemnation that is roaring his head and he say no no we resist in the name of jesus there must be rejoicing there must be freedom for with our god all things are possible if you are still there and you are still contemplating to come please come now this is an opportunity you must not be jesus is passing this way 
Jesus is passing this way. Jesus is passing this way. Don't miss this opportunity. Jesus is passing this way. This way. Today. Jesus is passing this way. He's passing this way today. Three more times. Jesus is passing this way. This way. This way, this way, today, Jesus is passing this way, he's passing this way, today, for the last time, Jesus is passing this way, this way. He's passing this way. He's passing this way. Mommy, please come. You're going to pray, and I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. For those of you who are here, believe God. Because God has revealed this, that there's going to be solution. I don't know you from Adam, but I had God speak expressly. And that's why I just want you to believe every word. As we pray, there's going to be a performance. For when we call upon the Lord in this place, he answers us. King of glory, Lord of lords, we bless and we exalt your name. We thank you for that thing that you have revealed. And Lord, we ask that Lord answers will come speedily in Jesus' name. We commit this your children that are on the altar. They have not come to kneel to anyone but unto you. They have opened their hearts unto you. And I pray, Lord Father, whatever it is that they are need, meet them at the point of their knees in the name of Jesus. Meet them at the point of their knees in the mighty name of Jesus. Meet them at the point of their knees in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible made me to understand. That in the cool of the evening, they brought unto Jesus people with all kinds of amen, all kinds of diseases. And Jesus healed them all. I ask that today, Jesus, you touch each and every one of these people and heal them of every amen in Jesus' name. Heal them of everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Much more than the word of any man could have said. Minister unto them. Minister peace. Minister salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Minister deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. For we ask with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to pray. The scripture that God gave to me for you people is in Matthew chapter 19. And the Bible says, Jesus looks at Zacchaeus and says, Today, salvation has come into your house because you are a son of Abraham. Father, I stand on that scripture. Today, let salvation enter into these homes. The salvation of healing, let it enter this home in the name of Jesus. The salvation of deliverance. Let it enter into this home in the name of Jesus. The salvation of turning things around. Let it enter this home in the name of Jesus. The salvation of favor. Let it enter this home in the name of Jesus. The salvation of turning hard situation to easy. Let it enter this home in the name of Jesus. Zacchaeus was a cast out.
people were running away from, but when Jesus came, say, today salvation has entered into your home because you are a son of Abraham. Father, I had you clearly. Let salvation enter this home by the power that's in the name of Jesus and let testimony come. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Excuse me, one more thing. Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? Join Foursquare we see on all our social media platforms to get a real-time update on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare we see is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare Wusei. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare Wusei. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare Wusei. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare Wusei. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, Go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on Create an Account and fill in your basic information and get connected. First Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.